Okay, everybody, welcome back. It has been a long four week break, uh, but finally we're back to the final six rounds of Formula One. We start off with Kota. The biggest thing about Kota, we'll go over weather first, but the biggest thing about Kota is the track changes and the long time since we've had a Grand Prix. There's been a long time for everybody to do wind tunnel stuff normally in a regular F1 season. We wouldn't really see that much development this late in the year, uh, but because the championship Particularly the Constructors' Championship is still really close. If Ferrari gets their act together and uh, McLaren falters a little bit, you could see a Ferrari uh, uh, Constructors' Championship. There's a lot to play for in these last six races, and normally there, there sometimes isn't. Okay, so weather. It is a sprint re weekend, so you will see racing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so you'll have qualifying on Friday. Unfortunately, it's Austin. It really doesn't rain all that much. We do have some chance of precipitation, uh, particularly in the middays, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but like really, it's kind of mostly just cloud cover, which is good. It keeps that temperature down. You can see Tuesday and then it is almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, pretty hot uh, for this time of year in Austin, uh, but Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all in the mid 80s. So pretty nice weather for... Uh, for Texas, especially with the cloud cover, cover, it'll actually be pretty good for most of the fans out there and for the tire temperatures because tire temperatures are a big thing around here. Uh, they tend to be pretty damaging. But let's go over some, some some of the other stuff. We have track changes. So they're putting gravel down. We saw this at Austria, but I think, and we saw it at a couple other places. Uh, all the all the ones we've done some street courses recently, so you haven't seen a lot of this adding gravel to try to keep people in the track limits. Uh, Kota is a big track limits thing. Not quite as bad as Austria, but it's up there. Uh, there's a lot of places where you can use and abuse track limits if you really want to be uh, a naughty boy. I think mostly what they're going to be doing is the stuff that we saw at Spa. Uh, they're actually like uh, resin down, glued down uh, gravel bits on the outside of track limit corners. And it's just so those it doesn't pull gravel back onto the track, but still makes them uh, makes the car slow down when they go over track limits. You see all the ones where um, the actual track shrinks a little bit too. Everything gets a little bit closer so that the distance between the white line and the actual gravel isn't a car's width. So there is no such thing as being able to fit your car in there and go faster. If you're outside track limits, you hit the gravel, self-governing, you don't gotta worry about it anymore. And then most of the stewards can just kinda throw the blind eye to that corner and don't have to worry about it anymore. So we'll see lots of that kind of stuff. They haven't released the actual ones uh, from the FIA yet, so we'll have to wait and see uh, in a later video to take an actual look at what corners have changed. And again, we'll know by Friday action what kind of how to suss that out. The other biggest thing is is the big track changes is resurfacing. So Cota's on a weird kind of most of Texas. If you don't know anything about Texas, it, most of Texas. Well, I want to say most. A lot of Texas is built on, I can't remember the word that they use, but it's basically clay. Here in Canada, we have a lot of heaving that goes on, but it's, it's a temperature heave. So what ends up happening is the cold temperature lifts rocks up with a permafrost, and then as it thaws, those rocks stay there and all the gravel falls back down and then the lift it and the growth falls back down and lift and then falls back down and lift and then falls back down. It happens over and over and over again. And what that ends up doing is pushes these rocks up through the road and causes all the space around the rocks to kind of fall down. And we get a lot of heaving that goes on that destroys our roads. In Texas, it's very much the same, only it goes with the heat and it's because the ground underneath is really kind of just clay. So it gets hot, all the clay moves around. It gets cooler in the winter months and that clay stays and it kind of heaves and moves around and stuff. And so Coda is built on a big clay pit, basically. Uh, so what ends up happening is the surface is really bad in the, the at Coda. And what that means is that resurfacing has to happen a lot. They did it in 2021. Tw uh, so 2021 was turns two to 10 and 12 to 16 reflattened. But this time what they're doing, uh, the main straight. So this is on Instagram. It's not really a place I go very often, but still uh, this is the main straight. And you can see it's all the way. It's actually from the first corner or the last corner down here around that all the way up. And you can see that they've done 
the whole thing. So it's, it's all the way down through the first little chicane in there. And I think that's pretty much it. But this was a, this is a big deal because that was a very bumpy section. And if we remember last year, Lewis Hamilton and Charles go, both got disqualified for uh, plank wear. So if you don't know, there's a plank underneath the F1 car. It's made of a composite wood and there's held on there with some uh, titanium blocks, skid blocks that you can see all the sparks coming from. That's where that's coming from. Uh, but what happened at Kota is that they don't really know what the surface is going to be like every year. If you were to take an IR scan, an imaging scan of the track in one year and come back the next year, it would be pretty much completely different. Uh, evolved so if it had a bump that bump would be worse the next year so they kind of understand where those bumps are uh, but if you're trying to plan plan out your downforce you might not really get it right and you might have extra plank wear and you might actually see uh, you be under that minimum so they can the planks can only wear so much and it, it happened the last year Lewis and Charles both had their planks wear too much so what they don't test all cars for this kind of stuff some of the tests they do they'll do fuel for everybody uh, they'll do general uh, measurements for everybody weight is one that I think pretty much everybody gets uh, but plank wear is not one that they do for everybody so they pick out a few cars and they just happen to pick out the two that had uh, plank wear outside of uh, what was allowed. Should they do everybody? I mean, sometimes they don't have time. That's the big thing for this weekend. This is the start of a triple header. So there's a lot of turnaround time that goes between tracks and they don't necessarily have time, the FIA that is, time to do everybody. But that's something to look out for this weekend and I think that's gonna be the biggest thing. If you wanna concentrate on one thing this weekend, it's how this resurfacing is going to change the track. Uh, and the first corner is the biggest thing about this track. I would argue that maybe this one down here, I don't know what numbers they are, but it goes around this little uh, tower uh, complex. Uh, I've driven this course on iRacing. It is very challenging, and I find this corner set up into the penultimate final corner is uh, is really difficult to do. The, the change in direction is really hard on the cars. So I would say other than that little bit, which is difficult down there, uh, this... Uh, giant i think it's 70 meters up to the first corner and into that first braking zone it is really hard to do uh, because it's a corner they don't really do that much there's not a lot of uphill first corner braking that i can think of really no there's not really all that much i mean catalonia sort of goes uphill but it's after the first corner whereas this is going up at the first corner. So anyway, it should be pretty interesting. As far as the teams go, the biggest thing that we have is we've had four whole weeks for everybody to try to do some work on their cars. And what does that mean? Well, when they're racing every other week or every week, you get this sort of, that's why you see half packages and you see one car get upgrades and the other one car doesn't is because whatever you've decided from the previous race to improve your car you don't necessarily have the time to design and build and ship those components for everything that you want to do for the next race the difference here is same as when we came back to spa they do have time so you should technically have some fully upgraded cars and the biggest thing is this is the time that Red Bull thought that they would be able to turn around the trajectory of their car. If we remember, since about Miami, the car has been getting worse, and then sometimes it gets a little bit better, and then it has seemed in the past probably like four to six races, not only is the car getting worse, but they really don't understand why it's getting worse. Reminds me a lot of 2022 Mercedes, where they did a weird thing and then they didn't really understand why it wasn't very good later on. Turns out this kind of no pods sort of thing that Red Bull has done, not completely, but sort of the, the 2022 Mercedes style, just not as extreme, is difficult to deal with as far as trajectory and how planning of the car goes. So they said, and again, this was from Helmet Marco, not from, so much from the rest of the team, but it seems as though they were hoping that at Kota, a lot of the uh, trend will be reversed around. And that's what RBR Daily here is is kind of getting to. We'll just have to wait and see. It's hard to say. Will they get it under wraps? Should be ready for both cars. So any setup won't be one car doing one sort of setup and the other car doing another sort of setup. And you not being able to really share data because they're two totally different uh, packages that they've brought. It should be 
one homologated package for both cars, but that should be the same thing for every team. And we have to remember that the McLaren hasn't brought as many updates in the previous races that some of the other teams have been trying to do. Uh, so that's one big thing to look for. Again, you're gonna have to really look at Perez as well because he seems to notice things in the car a lot sooner than what Verstappen does as far as like getting the bad parts of it. So it's a good good to look at both the cars. The other thing to look for is Mercedes. This is Lewis Hamilton. He's probably the most experienced around here. Keep in mind when Lewis Hamilton started winning is when Cotes sort of sort of came around. So all of Lewis Hamilton's uh, dominance has been while Cota was here. So there's nobody really else here to do some crazy kind of stuff. Schumacher obviously did very well here previously. That was a different Grand Prix at that point in time. But uh, since Cota, uh, Lewis Hamilton has been on it and he is actually quite good around here. It's not just a car thing. He is actually just really good. So I would really watch out for Mercedes, particularly Lewis Hamilton. He is the master of this track. The only thing I really mention is no Daniel Ricciardo, which is gonna be weird. Uh, but we'll have to keep an eye on him as uh, on his replacement as well, Liam Lawson, uh, just to see how he does. Uh, he's going to take a grid penalty though, so he's not going to be probably in the top 10 unless something crazy happens. Some special liveries. This is the Alpine, which is going for orange. You know why? I think it's just Indiana Jones. In my mind, Indiana Jones is more kind of a leathery wood thing so i don't know why orange is their thing it's fine because guys i think mclaren is doing well they hinted at and they said they were going to release it today but i haven't seen anything they said they were going to do a chrome livery going trying the chrome again going back to uh, maybe the west days not sure so at least we would have two fully orange cars on track and then the Haas, usually doing their typical um usgp livery which is very American themed, which is great. I don't know why they don't lean into this more often, embrace their American side of the team. Uh, they should just have this as their livery all the time because they're, I mean, it says it's American car. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't do that, but you know, whatever, uh, they have a special livery for here. So they're gonna do that as well. Yeah, so like I mentioned, uh, McLaren has been teasing for today, the, uh, the release of their chrome-ish sort of livery. I assume that's what that's what this means. It's a very chrome moving thing. Uh, they said they were going to do it today. Everybody seems excited. Previously, the chrome stuff from McLaren hadn't been very nice, so I don't know. Could be good, could be not. Uh, their previous liveries have always been pretty good, but that is the lead up to Kota. I'm going to do one more video once we get a little bit closer. I want to go over some of the track changes a little bit more in detail, so tune in for that. And then we will be here for Friday qualifying, Saturday sprint, Saturday qualifying, and then Sunday with the race. So should be good, should be very interesting. Again, big thing to work out, watch out for is track changes and has Red Bull turned it around? Uh, those are the biggest stories for me coming out of Coda this year. Subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, and I'll check you guys next time.